it is my friend. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my experience using these Alienware computers for a bit of mining, for fun, seeing how it's like. So a lot of you guys have been asking about tutorials, what's your experience, what that kind of situation. Now, I'll preface it, mining, it's purely depending on how the market is doing. So with cryptocurrencies, sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down. Pretty much it's gone up, so everything's uh, going pretty well, more than I imagined it will be. Just performing really well, non-stop, just they go, they do really well. I got my computers with accidental damage insurance, just in case, you know, for fun. Something I also haven't done is added thermal paste to the memory cores of the GPU because that is one of the limitations for Dell's implementation of the RX, RTX 3080. It's uh, memory chips, they can overheat. So the first thing I do actually, let me just quickly jump in and show you the guides. Over in um, my Alienware command center, I've set up a custom profile called Efficient. You can just click on new profile here and you select it by clicking on the tick. I'll just delete that there. So my Efficient profile, now it will depend on how you configure your system, where you are in the world. I'm in Australia, so it gets pretty hot here. I have a few computers next to each other. It gets pretty hot here. It's coming to summer. Well, it's coming to spring. This is pretty much the end of winter right now. So it's only going to get hotter. So I have my computer here on an advanced view. I set the power limit pretty much between 60 and 65%. I've got the clock also minus 100. I don't know if that does anything, but um, it tends to not actually use the clock. It's more about the memory. That's uh, one of the biggest triggers. But when I just reduce the power limit, to between 60 and 65, it seems to operate well. Now, if I do try mining with higher limits, for example, I'll give you a bit of a demonstration now. I'll turn off overclock. It's gonna start mining and you know getting a lot more situations happening. But if you look right there, what does that say? It says device is running too hot, performance is degraded. The GPU temperature is 53, but you can see that the GDDR6X temp is 110. So 110 degrees on the memory is where it starts to thermally throttle. So you don't actually need to reduce the power because the chip will automatically slow down to compensate for that really high degrees. But I like to just make sure it doesn't get to that limit. Now, like I said, check out some guys on YouTube they have already done it. They've just added thermal paste around the chiplets and it seems to just destroy the issue. Their temperatures just drop all the way down, running at 100% performance. There is another advantage to reducing the power levels anyway, and that is, let me just show you right here if I can find it. Oh, it's just, it's going crazy, the screen. That is the efficiency. So this GPU can use like 400 watts. 400 watts is nothing in the world. I don't know why people say that mining takes a lot of computing power, but 400 watts is nothing. Just I just turn off my air conditioning unit and that saves 10 times that electricity. My, my pool heater, takes 20 times that electricity. It's, it's a vile situation of our electronic devices. Your kettle, that one shoots up too. Obviously that doesn't run nonstop, but yeah, 400 watts isn't that much in the end of the world. I pay over here in Australia, 22 cents per thousand watts. So 400 watts per hour is less than 10 cents. So running it for a whole day isn't that expensive considering how much you're getting in the end. Of course, you can also run it with solar and have a battery and that way you're a bit you know, eco-friendly. That's what I chose to do with my life. But 400 watts isn't that much. But by reducing, by reducing the power, you can drop it all the way down to sub 200 watts. So that means you double your, uh, well, you almost double your mining efficiency. So you go from around 200 kilohashes per joule to, so you go from 200 kilohashes per joule to almost 400 kilohashes per joule. There is also another cool tool you can check out, and this one's called HWinfo64. So I've got it on the screen right there. If you scroll down to the bottom, you can see that the, the GPU temperature is 53, but my memory is 108. So I can't, I can't like leaving my memory running at 100. So that's why I reduce the efficiency there. So if you're testing out how much efficiency you should use, check out how much watts your computer is using and uh, check out the temperature of your memory and then you can optimize it yourself. Something I also do is there's an app called Throttle Stop. All I do is I tick that disable turbo button right there. So because mining is pretty much a GPU operation, you can mine on a CPU, but it's like you're just burning money. You're not getting anything and you're burning money. So you don't want to do that. If you disable the turbo, it limits the CPU performance to pretty much 10 watts. So traditionally these CPUs, they can go up to 100 watts. So you can be pretty much in the background burning up to 100 watts for the sake of, yeah, it's not worth it. So you can reduce that down. Of course, if you're doing some other stuff like gaming and all this kind of nonsense that 
you don't need you don't need to you don't need turbo boost i've disabled it and I, i'm happy i game downstairs and everything's good but if you want the maximum frame rate and all that kind of nonsense just keep it enabled and just spend 100 watts worth of electricity two cents an hour over here in australia that kind of situation so that's the other thing i do i got this is um i got a tutorial of course on how to set up scheduler so as soon as you log in it automatically launches this application so it's always running without turbo boost check it out in the description i'll have a link there and it's pretty much easy it's just you type in task scheduler and you can go through and check out all of the nonsense that's running in the background nvidia have like a million updates and crash reporters running in the background i just have a firewall i got a firewall called i think i've already done a review of it but if i haven't i'll throw it up i got a firewall called simple wall and I've got that pretty much disabling every single internet connection that I can find. So whenever NVIDIA is trying to do an update, disabled. Whenever Windows is trying to do an update, disabled. And I also run OOS, let's find out the application for certain, OOS U10. That's a free application. You can go ahead and disable all of the Windows updates and all the nonsense that happens in the background. I use that to disable it because I want a clean rig. Of course, I can uninstall the applications, but I might need it in the future. Now. It all depends on how much you want Windows updates. I tend to find whenever you update to the latest version of Windows, everything slows down. And if you update the latest NVIDIA drivers, will it be mining friendly or will they introduce issues into the drivers to slow it down? I don't know. You guys let me know if it's worth updating my NVIDIA drivers. I personally don't want to because I'm happy with my situation. I leave it alone and it runs happy. What I do also have, and I won't put that in this tutorial, I'll put it in a separate tutorial. I have a firewall running on my NAS pfSense firewall is open source, although I haven't actually inspected the source code, but that firewall is pretty cool because not only can you choose which IP connections to allow internet to, which servers to access, all that kind of good stuff, you can also throttle the speeds. So I actually make these computers not able to upload a ton of data to the internet and download a ton of data to the internet. I can't remember the exact limit, but I might even limit it to as low as 100 kilobytes a second. So if these um, mining applications are doing something dodgy, it's limiting the amount of bandwidth that they can dodgify with online. So now we're coming to the application I use. There's several different mining programs out there. I'll have another tutorial about um, another service called Unminable. That service is good because you can pretty much mine any coin so you can mine like cardano i'm just like finding out all these weird stuff that's happening do you know the shiba you know the the offset of dogecoin you can pretty much just mine any coin with that one with nice hash that one is all about mining bitcoin and then you can transfer it over to whatever you want so here's nice hash here it's pretty easy to install your antivirus might complain of course just allow it if you want to use it now something to know about nice hash the person who made nice hash is a dodgy fella He's obviously reformed right now, and he's no longer a dodgy fella. He's running a legit business, but you don't never know. You never know. You never know what kind of situation you're using. So that's why you have your firewalls and all that stuff. And yeah, I don't know what's going on with cryptocurrencies. Is it safe in the world of today? It's moving into towards being a safe as an asset. In the past, it used to be just like a criminal operation or dodgy people, kind of like fun time people, just having fun time situations, all these weird stuff. But, you know, all these financial institutions seem to be using it, you know, so is it safe? Hopefully, you never know. Lots of stuff. People lose money. All this kind of stuff happens. But of course, if you're watching the video, you're just pretty much new to this world and you're just going to be amazed with seeing some sort of money being generated out of thin air. So this is the application that I'm using right now. This is called NiceHash. It's got a big yellow button here. You click it and it starts mining. Now there is advanced features you can do. So I'll jump in and show you. In the plugin section, this is where all of the different miners can be used. I personally have uninstalled every single miner apart from Excavator. So Excavator is the miner written by the NiceHash people, remember, who used to be reformed. Everyone can reform and improve. Used to be dodgy, but now they're apparently safe. Everyone uses them. So that's written by them, and that one pretty much performs the best, gets the best hash rates, doesn't have a developer fee. Developer fees are like when you're using someone's mining program, watch out soon, I'm gonna make a mining program that's gonna kill it, so subscribe for that. When you're using someone's mining program, there's a little cut to the developer, so that's how you get rich. You don't get rich by mining, you get rich by being the developer who shares the mining application and get everyone to use it. So make sure you use my mining application coming soon. It's gonna triple the mining performance, hopefully. I'm, gonna, I'm an engineer background, so hopefully I'll get into it, get it mining on Macs, that'll be cool. Anyway, point is, 
I uninstall all the other I uninstall the other miners. One, it limits my scope. So the other miners, again, a lot of them are closed source. Pretty much all of them are closed source. I don't know what they're doing. So I like to make sure that the miner that I'm running is the one that I want it to be run. Of course, if you have a firewall limiting the amount of situation that's happening, you're in a better situation than you wouldn't be. And it's faster to launch if you just have one miner. Less nonsense. With NiceHash, the good thing about it, or kind of like the trademark about it is, it has all of the miners, even though it has its own one now, which is good. It has all of the miners, and it pretty much has a ben benchmark. It runs all of the miners and sees which miner is the fastest for you. So you might be thinking, okay, you know, this one's running the fastest today, but tomorrow, will it be the fastest? It has been consistently the fastest, but it might not look, but it might not be in the future. For example, all these miners, well, the ones that generate the best hash rates, they mine Ethereum. So Ethereum is written by this like little dude, yeah? He's like a little genius, dropped out of college, all that kind of stuff, yeah? Problem is though, it's a mining, it, you need to mine to generate coins. However, for the past however many years, he's been talking about changing it from mining to generate the coins to actually owning coins to generate the coins. So if that ever goes through, it, may, it was meant to go through a few years ago, might come in this year, might come in next year. If that change goes through, mining isn't gonna generate as much coins as it used to do because it's all about who owns the coins, generates the coins. It's proof of stake, it's actually pretty crazy. Maybe I'll do a video all about that. But you can actually make money from just having coins. It's called staking. So if you have like a thousand coins, you can get an interest rate of 6% and earn 6%, what, 60 coins a year from just owning the coins. It's pretty crazy. I have to do a video review about that stuff. This mining world is mental. It's like, it's getting into the world of craziness. Point is, this situation might change. So when that happens, People are going to have to choose like a new coin to mine or a different algorithm or something's going to happen. But when that happens, it's going to affect pretty much all of the miners and you're going to have to transition at that point. So if you are thinking about investing in this situation, maybe it's good to wait and find out what's going to happen when this proof of stake changes. If it does ever happen, it might not happen. A lot of the miners say, hey, if you, if you change, watch out. If you change, we're going to destroy and you're going to go down. So you don't know what's going on. The, the alternative coin is basically that little genius Russian dude. He was mates with this other dude, an older dude. He's got like a little goatee. And they had a little bust up after they made Ethereum. So he went off and made another coin called Cardano. And that one's already running on proof of stake. So a lot of people are saying actually, what's the point of doing Ethereum if you can just use the one that's already got proof of stake inside it, Cardano. So you don't know what's gonna happen. This is a nice hash tutorial, so I'll show you, you know, what the situation with nice hash. But pretty much disable all the plugins. You can go into options here. There's like a little settings button here. You can have it auto start mining when you launch the application. You can have it running on startup. You can disable all the error reporting. You can log, you know, just do some fun stuff. They got automatically restarts if it runs into any issues. Devices, I disable the CPU and I just have the GPU enabled. And it just goes ahead and mines. This one's mining 0.1 MBTC, which is like 0.0000. It's, it's a very small amount of Bitcoin. MBTC is like a thousandth of a Bitcoin, something like that. Point is, that equals to around $7 Australian a day. Of course, you need to negate the electricity cost. There is an option to actually have it show net profit, although I don't ever trust that net profit figure. You put in your electricity costs and it tells you how much money you'll be earning. Of course, you still have to pay electrical companies. It's not like they do the business for you. So you'll find that your electricity bill goes up. I don't think it will go down by, I don't think it goes up by much. Obviously your mileage may vary. For me, having a computer running in the background takes no electricity compared to me just turning on the air conditioning. When I turn on my air conditioning, I was shocked. I recently got in some smart meter and I noticed the monitoring. When I turn on the air conditioning, it destroys my electric, it destroys my electricity bill. Like I was looking at the Dakin website. Dakin website was like, whoa, whole house cooling completely 100%. Then I find out air conditioning is good for cooling, but it's not good for heating because heat rises. So the only way to have it good for heating is having it pumped in under the ground. And having it pumped in under the ground means like digging under the, like, it's not gonna happen. So they try blowing hot air from the top to go down, but heat rises. So you're not gonna heat your home. You can potentially cool your home. I'll find it in summer what happens. Point is, it takes up a lot of electricity. So computers, mining, negligible compared to just air conditioning. You want to save the world? Turn off your air conditioner. Just get, take off your top. Get in jiggy with it. Enjoy your life. And then, yeah, that's it. Instead of just walking around your house wearing a coat, 
just take off your, your, your coat and do some mining and then you've net netified the electrical cost or if it's um, yeah that's if it's too hot if it's too cold wear a coat instead of turning on the the heater have you tried using a heater an electric heater like a little tiny electric heater two kilowatts an hour two kilowatts like these five computers at 200 watts each that's just one kilowatt so i can have 10 alienwares running mining away earning i don't know how much money obviously that money isn't real until you've actually got it in your bank and whether or not it goes to your bank because you know you're using dodgy people you'll find out when you try it out hopefully it'll work i tried it it worked it was weird i didn't believe it whatever happens again whether it's like catch 22 point is just having a heater on an electric heater two kilowatts an hour that's 10 10 computers so you want to save the world turn off your heater wear a coat or do some jogging on the spot you get fit point is this is the application i'm using it's called nice hash i think also um i think there's a referral code so if you like these kind of videos use the referral code i don't know what happens i don't think anyone's ever used my referral code if someone uses it thank you and i'll let you know what they do they might give me like a i don't know what they'll do i'm excited to find out but you can also refer your mates too it's like a pyramid scheme enjoy your life so make a video share your referral code share the video we we'll just link it down in the section below i'll check it out i'll use your referral code refer myself or if they let me or you just or if you have more than one computer set up multiple accounts and refer yourself and then you get whatever bonus you get i don't know what the bonus is but you get a bonus i'll also coming soon be having a video about um other mining situations but this is my stash it's pretty easy to use it's not really much to it you give your worker a name and stuff happens on the website it tells you how much you potentially got how much you generate mining, what your monthly income will be. And this is, of course, if the mining situation stays the same. So you've been asking about what the situation is with mining on these computers. It's a bit of a giggle. I'm not really sure what I'm doing with my life. I'll see what happens. And I uh, hope you guys find this video useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I'll, of course, do a follow-up with the other mining tools you can use and uh, the firewall situation. And maybe I'll do a video where I add some thermal paste to the GPU to make it perform better. Lessons learned, use a firewall to find out what kind of dodginess these applications are doing in the background. Don't trust the service that you're using. So if they say you've got money, you may not have money because at any time they could get hacked and all that stuff. So, but of course, and also no, as soon as you start turning the coins into real cash, you might have to start paying taxes. It all depends on the thresholds and your intention. So if you're mining for an investment, you're gonna pay taxes on that. If you're mining uh, for jokes and giggles, it depends on how much money, your government will tell you what the rules are. But I think there's like, a, oh, check, check your government's thing, but I think if you're generating tons of money, you're definitely gonna pay taxes. If you're doing it for a giggle and you get like a fiver here and there, I don't think, I don't, you know, check your government. You might be in Zimbabwe and they like their little, now $5 could be like a million dollars. Hope you guys found this video useful and enjoyed the show. It is my friend.